Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Uh, even though the weather has done a lot of changing from yesterday until today, is still a mighty good day. We are certainly thankful and grateful tonight that the Almighty God has allowed us to once again be able to, uh, by way of uh, Facebook Live and conference call, uh, be with the people of God as we look out. And for us here in Minneapolis, we, we have a blizzard going on outside, but it's nice and warm inside. And Hopefully everybody is safe, everybody is full, and ready to study the Word of God. All right, let us begin. I'm, I kind of got stuck on this song, and I can't get it. I'm trying to stay with it till I finish uh, this course or this these lessons on prayer. Let's do a verse of this. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good. God has smiled on me, he has set me free, God has smiled on me, he's been good. To me, amazing grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. God has smiled on me. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful that you've given us Another opportunity to study your word. We are thankful and grateful, O oh God. We come tonight asking that you would have mercy on the bereaved tonight. Uh, realize that there are many that are grieving the loss of loved ones, some more innocent than others. But we know that thou art a gracious God, and you make no mistake that everything you do has a purpose. It's not ours to wonder why, but to hear and obey. We thank you, O oh God, for we know that because of who you are, we are able to do the things that we are do right now. In spite of what we might be feeling, it's the Lord's blessings that we now enjoy. We pray, O oh God, and we thank you for you've allowed us not only to see another day but to uh, make it into another christmas season and we ask that you forever keep in the forefront of our mind that jesus is the reason for the season we ask you this O oh god in the name of jesus that you would heal tonight heal those that are sick among us and heal those that are feeling down and out and heal those that are feeling 
lonely and by themselves. We ask that you let them know right now that you will never leave them nor forsake them, that you're always right by their side. Open our minds and our hearts and our understanding so that we might become better servants unto thee. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, tonight we begin, and I don't know how far I'm going to get. I do have a spot in my head that I want to get to, but that's it's quite a bit of material to try to cover. And I don't want to make you glad twice because I want I want all of you that are listening tonight uh, to, uh, if you don't have it, I'm going to try to remember or I'm going to try to get uh, Sister, Br Sister Brown to do it, uh, send you out the conference call line uh, number so that on Christmas morning, uh, and rather than having a service at the church, we're going to have a fireside chat uh, via the conference line and uh, they ask all of you to dial in and, and be ready to uh, join in the conversation you can unmute your phones that day because we'll be having a back and forth and, uh, I especially want to uh, I'm, I'm getting this out there now I want I want sister Bradford to say something because she seems to have gone through quite a bit, and yet her spirits are still high. And she needs to share that with all of us. All right. Tonight, we're going to talk about God's kingdom as we are studying the Lord's Prayer. And thy kingdom come is where we're at now. And we are going to ask the question tonight, or we're going to be looking at God's past kingdom. Uh, you have to hear all three of them, because there's a past, a present, and a future kingdom. And you have to listen to all three of them to get the full context of where we're coming from. God's kingdom, past, is described when he tells Moses to say to the nation of Israel, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my commandments, then ye shall be a peculiar, a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Exodus 19 and the A part of the fifth verse. So since he says that to us, and he says that to Israel in the A part of that fifth verse, what does God say next when he say, says to Moses in verse number six, Exodus 19 and six. Exodus 19 and six said, you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words you must speak to the Israelites. Now that's from the Good News Version of the Bible, or God's Word. You will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. Now he said that to Israel. He said to Israel, you're going to be the ones that I'm looking forward to being the priest to spread the word about me, just like you spread the gossip around town. You need to spread the word of God around town. And nowadays with all of our electronic media, all of our formats such as Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and all of that other good stuff, but we can spread the word. We can get it around. There's no excuse for not knowing. But he says, you, the whole nation, is going to be a kingdom of priests. God's plan for his kingdom in the past 
was for Israel to be the kingdom of priests who would bring the world to him. Now, as Christians, have we done that? Have we brought the world to Christ? Or have we run folk away from the church? A priest acts as an intermediary between God and people. That's why God makes what promise to Abraham in Genesis 22 and 18. 22 and 18, he says, in your seeds, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. The kingdom, priests, intermediaries between God and people. Israel, well, the church, intermediary between God and people. But do we really act like that? Some of the things that we now as a church support and put our weight behind has nothing to do with bringing folk to God. It's about putting money in the treasure and putting some butts in the seat. And COVID has eliminated that. So now the concentration is on putting money in the treasure some kind of way. And I hope you can get some folks back in the seats when this is all said and done. But our primary function, the past kingdom of God, his purpose was for Israel to be priests that would bring people to God. I don't know. I don't know how how, how you feel about it, but that 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 was the purpose of his his past kingdom to bring people to him. She beget she not pastors beget sheep, sheep beget sheep. Pastors are shepherds. They can't get sheep. Sheep have to get sheep. Well, what you talking about? A, a monkey can't have a cow. A cow can't have a monkey. Only a cow can have a cow, and only a monkey can have a monkey. If you want sheep, you have to have sheep going out getting sheep. That's your job. As a born-again believer, is to get sheep, to bring other people to God by the way you live your life. Don't talk a good religion. Live. A good religion. You know, we sing the song, Have You Got a Good Religion, Certainly, Lord? Well, we, we know the song, but do we live the life? Do we walk the walk that we talk? The thing about it is, we are no different than they were back then. Israel was not interested in bringing about God's kingdom by being a nation of priests who would lead the world into the right relationship with God. And we seem to be following in their footsteps. We're not worried about trying to bring nobody to God. We're not worried about trying to uh, teach folk how to have a right relationship with God. Do and make you feel good. Well, a lot of stuff that make me feel good ain't good. It might it might be uh, something that uh, we consider having a good time, but it ain't good for me. Uh, if the expression goes, it might be good to me, but it ain't good for me. Therefore, after God's past kingdom came God's present kingdom. 
his present kingdom. When Jesus came to earth, he brought God's kingdom present with him. Christmas in a couple of days. When Jesus came to earth, he brought God's kingdom present presence with him. To begin his public ministry, Jesus says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17. And the B part of the verse. The kingdom is at hand because Jesus is on the verge of leading men and women into an obedient relationship with God the Father. So when he was born, he brought the kingdom, he brought God's kingdom presence with him. Brought it with him. Didn't have to wait for it to come. He brought it with him. Being a Christian is being a member of God's present kingdom, which is called the church. God's purpose for the church, the body of Christ, is the same as it was for the nation of Israel. The apostle Peter reminds us we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Now the second part of that verse says something. It says, His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. See where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. See where he brought me from. Christians sometimes speak of the priesthood of all believers. In the Old Testament time, people did not approach God directly. A priest acted as an intermediary between God and sinful human beings. With Christ's victory on the cross, that pattern changed. Now we can come directly into God's presence without fear, Hebrews 4 and 16, and we are given the responsibility of bringing others to him also. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. When we are unlimited, or when we are united with Christ as members of the body, we join his priestly work of reconciling God and people. As a Christian, you ought to be bringing somebody to Christ. Your lifestyle should be such that it brings somebody to Christ, that it draws somebody to Christ, that it makes somebody want to know, what do you have that I don't have? You remember the story about the old man singing and eating out of a garbage can and the rich man contemplating uh, suicide saw the old man and wanted to know well, how can he be happy eating out of a garbage can? And before he died, he said, I got to find out. I, I just got to find, I can't kill myself till I find out why this man who has nothing eating out of a garbage can can be so happy. What has he got that I haven't got? I've got everything that money can buy and yet I'm sad and ready to end it all and he down there having a good time. As he talked to the old man that was eating out of the garbage can and asked him, what do you have that I don't have? I'm rich. You name it, I got it. 
Now, what you got that I don't have? And the old man simply looked at him and said, if you really want to know, I got Jesus. Christians, sometimes when we are talking about the priesthood of all believers, we forget that we, our job is to draw folk, to bring folk to Christ. Not to show off your biblical knowledge, but to bring folk to Christ. Not to prove that you can, you know, the Greek word for this, that, or the other, but to draw folk to Christ. Get off your high horse and quit judging folk. They are sinners that need saving. V, you were a sinner saved by grace. And you don't forget where you come from. Just that quick. That's the present kingdom. That's what we're supposed to do. The present kingdom. Thy kingdom come. The present kingdom. We should be drawing others to Christ. God's future kingdom. The day is rapidly approaching when the trumpet will sound and Christ will return to set up his eternal kingdom. The other day I was laying in the bed and thinking about all of the stuff that's happening in the world today and I looked up and I said, Lord, what's going on? Did, I, did the rapture happen and I missed it? All this trouble that's in the world right now. Just don't seem. We did something. And everybody know what you did. The future kingdom. The day is approaching when Christ shall return to set up his eternal kingdom. The Bible describes this as a time when nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah 2 and 4. There will also be a phenomenal change in the animal kingdom. As Isaiah tells us, the wolves also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lay down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fall, they, they will be falling together. Isaiah 11 and 6. When we read the Isaiah 11 and 6, it says, The wolves also shall dwell with the lamb, the, le the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf with the young lion, and the fatlings together, and a child shall lead them. A child. A little child shall lead those who formerly scorned, who formerly scorned to be controlled by the strongest man. Calvin understands this like this. He said, they are willing to submission, submit themselves to the ministers of Christ who are to instruct with meekness and not use any coercive power, but to be as little children. Matthew 18 and 33. The cause of it, the reason they shall be submissive is because they shall, shall be the knowledge of God. The more you know about God, the more you're willing to follow his minister. They shall thus live in love, for the earth shall be filled full of the knowledge of the Lord, which shall extinguish men's which shall extinguish men's hearts and animosities 
Matthew 8 and 3 says, Truly I say unto you, if you do not have a change of heart and become like little children, you will not go into the kingdom of heaven. Evil defeats us at this time. God will create a new heaven and a new earth, and his glory will fill the earth. So the question that we are going to ask, in two weeks, make a note of that, in two weeks, as is our tradition, we have, we don't have a Bible study between Christmas and New Year's. So in two weeks, we're going to be looking at where is God's kingdom? Where is God's kingdom? We must become like little children. The word of God will make you become as a little child so that you can follow the leadership that Christ has sent you. Your knowledge of God will cause you to follow Christ's minister, God's minister. Your knowledge of God. Study the word you can follow because you know the Holy Spirit ain't going to let him lead you down a path that's going to lead you to the destruction because the word of God the Holy Spirit will let you know if you're obedient will let you know I right, don't go down that road let him go on down that road but don't you go too many of us today want to show off how much we know notice it says the minister shall lead with meekness, not arrogance, meekness. Yes, we have to have some enforcers. We have to have some rule enforcers, but the minister of God, that's not his primary job. His, his primary job is to teach and preach. Teach and preach so that you know the word, so that you have knowledge of God. And it's because of your knowledge of God that you follow. That's what Paul said. It's not, you didn't, you didn't believe my story because of eloquence of speaking, but because of the contents of my speech and who I was talking about. You believe my report. And that's what's, what's happening with too many of us today. We're following the fancy good sound and not following the true word of God. That's my time. Thank you for listening on Friday morning, 10.30. I wanted, I wanted many of you that can to tune in so you can tell me uh, what you got for Christmas. And if you got something that you need to get rid of, I'll be more than happy. If you're close enough by, I'll be more than happy to come pick it up and take it off your hand. All right, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful for another session. and We thank you for studying your word. We thank you for the words that you've given us to say. We thank you, O oh God, because we realize that we can do nothing in and of ourselves that we uh, can only do what you, through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, allow us to say and do. 
we are thankful, oh God, even though there's snow outside and even though it's colder than it's been in a long time, yet, oh God, you blessed us to be in a nice warm place. You blessed us to have the ability to communicate one with the other without even leaving the comforts of our home. We pray, oh God, for our nation, for we're going through a very chaotic time. We're going through a very troubled time. We are in a time when our nation is so vulnerable and all it would take is just a little bit to tip us over. But we are at a tipping point where we could be manipulated and destroyed by outside forces that mean us no good. We pray, oh God, that you would continue to keep your arms around us and help your church. There are many that are being called, call themselves a church, but know nothing about your holy power. We pray that you would turn them around before it's too late. We ask, O oh God, that in the midst of all of the sickness and in the midst of all the sorrow, that you would help us all to become brothers and sisters, that we know that we are one blood. Despite our color, despite our nationality, we are still of one blood. We pray a special prayer tonight, O oh God, for uh, the parents of the two-year-old that was shot over in St. Paul. We realize, O oh God, that uh, you know what's best. Perhaps, O oh God, it was a tragic accident. We pray, O oh God, that you would please uh, intervene for all of the senseless killing, O oh God, needs to stop. Uh, death comes by our doors for natural causes without us giving death a hand. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless us to have a joy-filled Christmas. We pray that all will be safe, all will be healthy, and that no one will be losing their homes and everybody will have plenty of food. This and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> 